In this video, we're going to explore the Fraction Lab and give you some hints that are going to help you complete this lab. What you see sitting right here is the Fraction class as it is provided for you in the lab, and it's a partially completed class. And before we even look at the code, I'm going to just um, see what happens when I right-click. And I can see I have the opportunity to create a new fraction. I'm going to put in two numbers like um, 3 and 6, and you might guess that n is the numerator and d is the denominator, and if so, you're thinking correctly. And down here I get a fraction object, in this case Java named it for me, it's called Fraction 1. And if I right click, I can inspect it. So if I inspect it, I can see, oh, this looks like original numerator is 3, that's the number I ended, entered. Original denominator is 6, like I entered. And then it appears to have reduced it, so numerator num is 1 and den or denominator is 2. I see that there's a number of methods I can run. I can choose get decimal and it gives me 0.5. I can choose to um, get the denominator and it gets 2, so I notice it gives me the reduced denominator. I can ask for the numerator and it gives me that. I can um, ask to get original and there's my original fraction, 3 slash 6, and you'll notice this is a string. And then this next one appears to also return a string and there we go, it returns my reduced fraction as a string. All right, let's take a look at the code in here. Now let's just go up to the top. Here we go. Um, you'll notice this class was written uh, quite a few years ago, but um, nothing's really changed about it. Um, we have two, four attributes, the original numerator and original denominator and the numerator and denominator. Those are the attributes that are going to show up whenever I inspect this object. Down here we should notice that um, same name as the class name, so this must be the constructor. And you'll recall when I constructed my object, I sent two numbers, n and d. It appears to um, set the original numerator to n and the original denominator to d. And the next, next thing it calls on is reduce. Now when I look at this, I can tell it's a method. And the way I can tell it's a method is because of these parentheses right here. There's nothing in front of the method name which would imply that this method is sitting inside this class. So let's go look for it. And here it is. All right, here's my method reduce. You'll notice that this is a private method. This isn't a method that we're going to call on from an outside class. It's a utility method for within this class. When I go down here, the next thing I see is it's going to calculate GCF, which um, makes sense would be greatest common factor. And it's calling on another method here, get GCF. I know it's a method because I've got parentheses with parameters but I have nothing in front of it which implies this method is also inside this class. And I recall seeing it right up here. Here we go. Here's get GCF. Um, interestingly, you'll notice that I send these values, original numerator and original denominator. But when I come up to GCF, I rename them to local variables A and B. Now this code is Euclid's algorithm, the one that you programmed just the other week. So um, this should look somewhat familiar, and it calculates the greatest common factor. You'll notice this is also a private utility method, and it returns an int. And right down here, it returns GCF. Now, interestingly, this is a local variable GCF, and when it comes down here, it gets um, assigned to another local variable GCF. So these are actually two different GCFs. They don't know about each other. Once I know the GCF, then I can reduce. And now num and den, and remember num and den are my two attributes up here, they now get values. All right, so they get values where we um, divide by GCF to figure out what those values are. And so now I'm done with my reduce method, and I come back up here, and I'm done with my constructor. So all that code happens when we run the constructor. Now we have these other methods, which are pretty straightforward. Um, we have a toString method, which is going to simply show us the numerator slash denominator, and this is the reduced ones. We've got the get original, which will return a string. We see original denominator, or sorry, original numerator slash original denominator. Get decimal method, you'll notice that this one returns a double. In order for it to be a double, we notice the numerator was cast to a double, otherwise we would have int division. And then we have simple get method. So get num returns the numerator and get den returns the denominator. Now, to prepare you for um, the methods you're going to be writing, which are simply add, subtract, multiply, and divide, 
And you'll notice in these methods, you're going to have where a fraction is sent as a parameter and you're returning a fraction. I'm going to write two methods right now that shows you how do you work with um, a fraction object that's sent to you and how do you return a fraction. But we're going to do this in two separate methods. So the first one we're going to do is called public boolean oops, is equal. And we're going to see if um, my fraction is equal to some other fraction named f. And if it is equal, we're going to return true. And if it is not equal, we're going to return false. Now, I have two fractions going on. Now, this class is of a fraction. So if I think in terms of me being a fraction, there's my fraction, which is me. Or in Java, me is the word this, so this. And the other fraction, which is named f, right here, fraction f. Now, in order to compare them, I'm going to actually need their decimal equivalent. So I'm going to use this method right here, get decimal, in order to compare them. So this dot get decimal, which is to say get the decimal for me, and I'm going to check to see if it's equal to f dot get decimal. That's the decimal equivalent of this other fraction. And I'm going to return this value. If they're equal, I'll return true. And if they're false, I'll return, or if they're not equal, I'll return false. All right, this compiles just fine, and let's take a look at how this runs. So first I need to create my fraction object, and let's just use that 3 over 6 that we had before. All right, and we're going to run this method that we just made, is equal fraction f. Now when we need to send this parameter right here, you can see it says fraction f, I need to send a fraction object. The way I do that is by typing in new fraction and um, let's do two-thirds. So I'm sending the fraction two-thirds, and I say OK, and it returns false, because of course 3 6 does not equal two-thirds. And you can see exactly what the code would look like if you ran it in another program here. Fraction 1 dot is equal new fraction two-thirds, and it returns false. Um, let's make sure we can get a true value. So let's do this again, new fraction 100, 200, and we say OK, and we can see that one is true because they both reduce to 1 half. All right, so what we just showed you was an example of how to work with this fraction and this other fraction, f. In our next method, we're going to actually return a fraction, so public fraction, and the method is called get reciprocal. And what I'm going to do is return a fraction object that is the reciprocal of me, or my fraction. So I simply return a new fraction object. So return new fraction, and I am going to just switch the numerator and denominator. And I have these nice methods that will get the numerator and denominator. So I can say new fraction, get den, which is going to get my denominator, and get num, which is going to get my numerator. In fact, I could even do this dot get den and this dot get numerator, which is to say you're getting my denominator and my numerator. And if I compile this, I forgot a semicolon. There we go. Oops. There we go. If I compile this, it'll work just fine. And let's um, take a look at this. So I could put in 3 and 8, say OK. And then if I ask for the reciprocal, so fraction get reciprocal, I get an object. Whenever I get an object returned, um, it looks like this in um, BlueJ. And remember how I talked about how um, objects, everything is stored somewhere else, and this is a memory address. So this arrow is like what I've drawn on the whiteboard, showing how it points to some place where the object is. And when I inspect the object, you can see that this one is the reciprocal of my fraction. My fraction was 3 eighths, and this one is 8 thirds. Um, let's just go back here. I put in this dot get den and this dot get num. I don't have to because these methods are right in this class and I'm referring to myself. It would work just as well to do this. And um, let's just run this one more time. Let's go back to our 3 and 6. We say OK. When we um, go and get reciprocal, and we inspect it, you'll see that we get 2 over 1, which would be the reciprocal, because 3 6 reduces to 1 half, and the reciprocal of that would be 2 over 1. Now, in the method you're going to be doing, you're going to be getting another fraction object here. 
and you're going to add it to yourself. So you're going to take your fraction, so this fraction, plus f fraction f, and when you're done, you're going to return a new fraction object.